I can't, I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe what we just created for next year is just gone. Before we had broken pre-sales records for the bluest eye, we were so busy. We had also been breaking subscription records. It was crazy. I mean, the season that was coming up was so exciting to me. And I, and I remember going through a period of like, just grieving it. So the week that we closed, business was great. And uh, we were off to the races with, you know, shows and all the rest of that. And now it's all shut. I have a colleague who comes from a long history of this notion that the show must go on. And so as we were getting the news and we were hearing of others closing, we were like, oh no, we can actually figure this out. Our artistic director was in conversation with one of our artists who were saying, why would you keep going? Like the world is saying to stop. So on March 13th, that was the moment. It was still a bit surreal. We kind of went home thinking, okay, two weeks, we'll be back. And so we just left. We just kind of, we didn't take anything with us. <laughs> you know, we just went home. And then, you know, the world changed. So right now we're focusing on auditory five to seven minute plays called Dream Boston. The playwrights pick a, a location in Boston and they project themselves into the year 2024 or 2025 where COVID is in the rear view mirror. These plays are absolute Boston time capsules. Maybe you even wanna like go to the location and listen to the audio play. You are listening to Dream Boston, a new series of audio plays powered by the Huntington Theatre Company. Dream Boston is a future vision of our city that is somewhere between dream and reality. This play is set on the top of MIT's Great Dome. This play is set at the Concord Bridge at the Minuteman National Historical Park. This play is set in Bates Hall at the Boston Public Library. The date is January 16th, 2023. The title of the play is McKim. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? You don't have to whisper. Oh, but this is a library. Yes. I thought you have to whisper in a library. Not all the time, not if you want me to hear you. It's almost like a great way to be toured around the city through these plays. You know, we really want people to know that, you know, we're here, that the lights are on. So I came up with this idea to have the ghost light series and ghost lights are when the lights are all, everybody's going home, one person is responsible to, and the lights are going turned off to walk this ghost light out to the front of the stage, plug it in, and what it shows is that a theater never goes dark, ever, never goes dark. And so we're trying to then bring back the memories now. We're trying to say, okay, let's form a ghost light series. Here's the thing about America. She's as dirty as she's clean. She's as gentle as she's mean. She said everything between sheer hell and mercy. So we are entering a year of experimentation at Arts Emerson, and we're going to be experimenting with lots of things, virtual sort of live experiences with social distancing. And what we were charged to do was to reimagine how we deliver, how we share that experience with people. And so very quickly we switched to what we were calling the Together Apart series, um, which was our virtual programming, which is our, our new venue. And it's a way that we started to pair both um, performance with um, town halls with myself and conversations with artists as a way to think, talk about our process um, for moving through this uh, crisis, but just in this new venue. You know, we had seven physical venues and now we have this virtual venue that we totally talk as a new theater space. He's mine, he was mine. 
I had no intention of giving him a win, that she comes in warm. And then Valera asks me. Natasha, what is your dream? As an organization, we intentionally created space to, to talk about what, what we missed, you know, pre-March 16th, to really reflect on, on the past in order to look forward to this new reimagination re stage. And I think for us, in this sort of reimagination process that we went through with our staff, what has shifted is the venue, but the organization and its values and its mission has, has remained. We are roughly 30% of what we were before in terms of the size of the staff. We are down 70%. To say that that was traumatic, devastating, is there's just not the words. We have not had to make uh, the decision to furlough or lay off any of our full-time staff members. Um, and so that is due in part to the college. We're centered here at Emerson College, the college's commitment to do as much as they can to maintain the continuity of our, our workforce. And then on March 20th, I really had to make the toughest decision I've had to make in a long time, which was to let over 200 people go. And we've been shut. And now we don't think we're really going to be looking at reopening. We went from January to of 21 to April of 21. And right now the word is maybe. Some people are saying October 2021 20, is a comfortable time. That's optimistic. A realistic time is probably, you know, January or spring of 22. For us, we have committed to suspending our live performance at least through December. We would love to be back in our theater in the spring, but we can only move as, as quickly as science moves and we're taking so many precautions. We're looking at new air filtration systems, create a more touchless experience. I'm not gonna open the theater until it's absolutely safe for people to come in. I wanna say one thing about normal. A lot of organizations are talking about going back to normal or going kind of back to good old days. But I have to say for us that we're not looking to go back to normal because the good old days were not good for everybody. I think the work that's being done right now around issues of equity, anti-racism, we're gonna come back a changed organization. It's not just a pandemic that we're managing through, but it's also this racial reckoning. And so that's a process for us that sort of um, speaks to the moment, um, but it's a, not a new moment for us. And it's something that we've been pretty loud about. <laughs> when Arts Emerson was founded, um, soon after, we made a commitment to be in partnership with the city as it tried to create a new narrative around race um, for our community. So we see those marquees as part of our public dialogue, the dialogue that we have with the city. The arts make our communities, make society a more welcoming place, a place where more people belong. And if we keep waking up every morning and looking ahead and trying to find um, the best of the situation, then we can get closer to what that sense of belonging for everyone means. The digital age is really important now to the live performance age. So we're gonna mix the two over the next three to five years. I feel like a piece of my heart is still on March 12th. It, it won't get woken up again until we're back, able to rehearse and, you know, able to stage a love scene. Use this moment to be more curious about experience that you haven't had. This is a moment to, to be expansive, you know, because you can do it all from the comforts of your home. Go to a theater experience or an online experience that you probably wouldn't have done experience different cultures, experience different come froms. Use this moment to really lean into your curiosity and uh, know that we will return. It may not look the same. Hold tight because uh, we'll be back. It's just an intermission.